Hi everyone, uh, my name's Colin Stilfelder. I'm very glad that my co-presenters didn't wear ties either because I was beginning to think I'd be the only person in a jumper. Uh, though I do look like teacher's pet now because I'm the only person sat there. So thanks for that. Um, okay, so I'm programme leader for architectural design technology at Glindo University in Wrexham, uh, which nobody can pronounce, which is great for advertising. And I'm going to talk to you about BIN, uh, perspectives from the rural fringe. Um, BIM at the thin end of the supply chain, uh, good practice examples for cooperation product co-design. Uh, you'll notice the first of a number of asterisks. Asterisks, I don't know. Uh, and the realities and barriers of BIM implementation. In the case for incremental incrementalisation, inc I can't even say the word in my own presentation. Incrementalism in North Wales. Um, the second asterisk has of asterisks there, uh, just to check that incrementalism is actually a word. And I'm not making this stuff up. Um, before this turns into a, some sort of a pity party for BIM in North West Wales and North East Wales, we do have roads, roads railways, aeroplanes occasionally coming to North Wales. Um, but in terms of the range of products and services, in particular BIM specialists and specialisms required to achieve the levels of BIM implementation in various discourses uh, from government, etc., we don't quite tend to hit those boxes very often in our region. And that's quite likely in more places than just North Wales. And I was talking to a colleague Right. University of Plymouth. The Plymouth is the edge of kind of nowhere as well, a little bit like North Wales. And you don't tend to get the size of projects required for hitting some of those uh, BIM levels. SMEs are the backbone of uh, the industry, construction industry in North Wales. And if you're talking about the BIM best practice, practice examples we often see, see, excuse me, they tend to be local authority and government projects and have little relevance really to small house builders. So showing us these kind of things again and again is not really of much use. And we've had government representatives from the UK government and the Welsh Assembly come to North Wales and talk to us about these things, and they become some sort of a panacea for all ills. Just look at this, and this is where we'll be one time, this lovely loop, and that's where we'll achieve. Um, having worked in the housing sector for a while as well, there are many graphs like this in the housing sector, and they mean nothing eventually in terms of actual implementation. So building information modelling is either an exciting prospect for future cooperation or, as we're discovering in North Wales, it's a badly mistitled term that's causing panic and the panic buying of software um, or the classic industry example of acting like an ostrich or just pretending it's not happening. And we can't do that because apparently, according to government experts, the Chinese are coming. Now, I live in Liverpool, which has the oldest Chinese community in Europe. The Chinese are already here, but we keep getting shown videos of Chinese uh, construction companies building BIM modelled construction sites, 12-storey uh, buildings in three, three and a half days, and apparently that's what's going to happen. Not in North Wales, but that's the fear factor for BIM. It just isn't the case the companies in North Wales where we're trying to work are going to be able to compete with some of those elements, not the Chinese necessarily, but the larger companies. We had a CPD event held at the university recently where one company had already changed BIM to digital engineering to suit their prospectus. And it, unless you bought the computer program they were working on, you would not get any sort of contract with them at all. And that's the kind of reality we're facing. In our region, projects like the Wrexham Super Prison, which unfortunately will not contain Lex Luthor, which is quite disappointing, and Wilver Nuclear Power Station are too big to be of any use in terms of an example for small companies that are used to building extensions and small houses and barn conversions, etc. I'm not saying that North Wales, by the way, is some Luddite part of the world where computers aren't used, but you have to work with the context and the reality that we are experiencing. These UK case studies miss the point in our region. And Welsh examples of BIM projects and large projects are really Cardiff projects. And it's a good place to be saying this, but unfortunately enough, a lot of the UK ones are usually London or South East projects. So there's that lack of connectivity as well in terms of what we can do in our region. Now I'm the chair of our local North Wales, uh, not how to call ourselves a hub anymore for legal reasons, a uh, BIM region. And what we've been trying to do is figure out a way with various people from different parts of the supply chain, how can we promote BIM? Because there's a lot of enthusiasm for BIM and a lot of recognition in North Wales that, that it could be an opportunity to make things uh, more collaborative, to work together better and actually take advantage of these digital opportunities. So the first, and this is the four asterisks, if that's the term, is the most to get to. Modelling is an issue. There is an obsession in North Wales, and there's some very unpleasant companies going around selling companies computer packages and telling them you'll be BIM ready at the end of this. 
And in North Wales at the moment, it's a bit like hoovering and googling. The BIM is all about rabbiting. So we're not actually talking about what we're supposed to be doing with this digital tool. It's just about the software package you're being sold to companies who don't know how to use it. Um, building information management would have been a much better term. And even that term from a few slides back, digital engineering, is a better way to think about this. You know, BIM is supposed to be about collaborative, collaborating digitally to do precisely what we do all the time anyway. It's not something entirely new. It's just using a computer program and digital technology to drive through the construction process. And we are being slightly sold these 3D and 4D augmented reality uh, solutions that completely ignore some of the human problems that we have in the construction industry. We're talking about talking digitally across entire systems between companies when some people don't even talk to each other in their own office. Um, or software programs that won't even open older versions of themselves. And that seems to be missing. We keep going to meetings about fame and people telling us it's the wonderful future without really breaking down some of those problems that would have happened before computers that are going to carry on even if you have a program. And those are some of the things that we've been trying to work our way around. What do the experts say? Poor David Philp. Um, I've been to many, many talks, and Richard mentioned him just a little bit earlier. David Philp, the government's impresario, We're talking about new this and new that. And as one of my university lecturers used to go, yes, but no. It's not about something new, but we're being sold this as something new instead. And I found that the best way to find an honest opinion is to catch a lift from um, one of the experts at this particular talk. So I caught a lift back to the train station in Bangor with Stephen Ra Steve Race, who's a, seen as a bit of a BIM expert. And he says he doesn't recognize the version of BIM that's being pushed by government at the moment. Um, BIM is supposed to just be about digitizing collaboration, not just about pushing programs using the most co uh, cooperative methods possible and aim for the highest quality information assets in the interest of the project. It's about the project. It's just about pulling back a little bit, considering the final outcome of the project and getting that right, not just about obsessing around computer programs. So I thought I'd show you a good practice example, um, which I think fits the mold, really, of what we want to try and get back to in places where there isn't the size and scale of projects to push the government-style um, examples. But good practice itself is maybe a, a problematic term. We seem to be obsessed with the term good practice, best practice, benchmarking. Where are the stories about where things have gone horribly wrong? Because really, that's the more useful information. The dods, the digging out of the deep doo-doos. Where are those stories in terms of figuring out how we're going to get past and implement them in a proper way? We're now more interested in our region in looking for those small incremental changes, the small, how did you solve that problem with that program? How did you get past the fact that this piece of software wouldn't speak to that piece of software? We're a bit more interested in finding out what, what does BIM 1.25 look like, or maybe 1.5, and how did you get there, and the warts and all experience that involved, not jumping towards level two as quickly as possible. This is an example which I thought was fantastic. Um, this is John McCall Architects working with Plus Dane Housing. They did a bit of work with the University of Salford and they produced a, a model and a pro, uh, for this, uh, the three wooden framed houses for the maintenance staff of Plus Dane, whose jobs were under threat in 2008, 2009 due to, the, due to the downturn. And I work with a number of housing associations and a lot of those kind of ancillary staff disappeared as uh, funding disappeared and funding went with it. And they put together a straightforward plan using the, the BIM model and iPads, etc., on site, and I'm in the computer there, to, to show these maintenance staff who had a variety of skills how to build this house, these series of help, excuse me, houses. And these are some slides from the architects. And it was about more than just building these houses. It was about upskilling these staff, about pride in their work, and it's saving their jobs. And this is a great example of how to use BIM as something more than just a computer program, reducing construction costs, training, etc. I'm not going to play this video because I know I'm the last person before lunch and if I was sat where you are, I should sh shut up and hurry up so we can eat. Uh, but there's a great video there if you've got this as a PDF version uh, of a bunch of fellows on a Scouse building site talking about how wonderful it was to be able to construct this and the pride they took in their work. But that's the problem for us in North Wales, is that's a, a Liverpool example. So even these small examples aren't really coming up in North Wales yet. Um, the architects themselves said, you know, BIM is not just about Archicad in just the same way we're trying to convince people in North Wales, it's not just about Revit. Excuse the stray apostrophe there. And the architects for this project said, you know, it, it was an accurate way to set up data, combined, combined data successfully from different places, no need for es estimating, no wastage, supporting the contractor, and wonderful training opportunity. 
And it's those examples, these small-scale, incremental examples that are much more used to us. This isn't going to win any prizes in terms of its architectural look, but it fitted in with this Housing Association's approach about being about more than just bricks and mortar. And that is maybe a good way to think about BIM. It's about more than just a programme. It is about delivering an improvement to the way we do work anyway. Incremental improvements is the way to go. What happened to the discussions about continuous improvement, which is all we heard in the construction industry before people started talking about BIM? Why are we all leaping forward towards this level two, etc.? One of the biggest barriers we have in North Wales is the so-called BIM specialist. And this is a quote from one of my colleagues on the, on the Hub. There, are, there appears a subculture of people who know just enough about BIM to be a danger to it in the industry. We have these people creeping around saying, we know how to do this, we know how the program works, we'll show you, we'll install it, you'll be done, and then they disappear. Or there are new roles appearing within companies where people are the SPIM specialist and divorcing themselves from the rest of the process. I have a terrible tendency in presentations of obsessing people without realising it. Um, I realised one of the presenters yesterday used one of those images of the circle, and I've just said don't use the image of the circle anymore. I know one of the speakers this afternoon for the session I'm chairing is a code assessor, but I believe that you work that into your role. So before I read the rest of this, um, there is an issue that the role of the architect, the QS, etc., hasn't really changed in the architectural technician, but there is this divorce with the specialisms. And it's that understanding that we're trying to get back to, that you can be those specialisms, but within the continuing role of being the architectural technologist and being the architect, etc., instead of divorcing it um, from the process. The danger is so-called specialists remove the need for the architect, technician, etc., to gain the knowledge of BIM and to make it a useful part of their process and not just some new chore. I don't know how many of you in practice or uh, uh, students have felt it's a chore, but there are certain people in North Wales who just feel it's a new level of complexity that's being thrown on instead of a helpful tool for making the process better. We need a bit of a rollback in North Wales. This, as you'd be glad to know, is the last slide. The BIM isn't about jumping to somewhere, it's about applying something and slowly gaining the benefits and then building on those benefits and then incrementally re reaching those further levels and not just being obsessed about hitting um, level two. Because in a genuine culture of sharing successes and failures, that is how BIM is really going to become useful. But at the moment, everyone is a bit scared about showing that they can't do it because asking for help is not the way it's supposed to go when you have people telling you it's the new way to do absolutely everything. And finally, it's about setting local targets or working within a local cooperative uh, collective uh, approach, not by targets arbitrar arbitrarily set by Westminster or as we found out in a meeting recently, weirdly mumbled in Welsh by someone from the Welsh Assembly. I mean, I speak Welsh, it was all right for me, but 95% of the rest of the audience didn't have a clue what he said and he mumbled it anyway. So. I think mumbling in government is a way of just pretending it's not happening. Um, so we can hit the better information management and not just go for the blue Peter badge of level two plus. Thank you.